Beautiful people, welcome back to another episode of Who Can Relate. If you are new here, welcome. I promise you, you're in good hands, and I have full gratitude for you taking the time and allowing me to have some time into your busy day. My name is Justin Davis, aka JD, and this show is all about people discovering their higher self through adversity, vulnerability, with a big underline under that word, and self love. Now, if you are a regular and part of the community, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And more specifically, I want to take this time to talk to you all. This is going to be my moment of full gratitude and just an outpour back to you of love from what I have received from last week's episode. Who knew that uh, story time with JD about ayahuasca would be the number one episode so far for season two and an incredible outpour from the community from each and every one of you of love of support of understanding of non-judging and just a safe space for me the amount of times i i read something just just really holding space for me as as how i received it was incredible the amount of words of, of encouragement and support was truly special and the amount of love that the community had for me is something I will never take for granted. I can't even put into words what it meant to me to read all these comments, all these DMs, to receive all these text messages, even talk to, on the phone with some of you um, about my experience and, and how much it touched you all. And uh, it just it just means the world to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom and the top of my heart. It just, um, I just wanted you guys to know it did not go unnoticed and I'm still trying to respond to each and every one of you. And I, I've, I've done a a pretty good job so far, but uh, don't worry. I, I still will respond if you haven't received anything from me yet. And uh, yeah, again, it just it, it really touched my heart and I, I'm just so grateful. So thank you. Um, OK, so back to the uh, routine here of the show. We are going to start with a quote of the day. And today's going to be a little bit different. I was on IG and I saw this um, this Instagram reels. It was a great message. And I thought it was very fitting for what today's episode is going to be about. So here you go. The biggest problem is, is when you idolize your suffering or your pain, there's no healing in that because then you, you so associate who you are with that pain that if that pain goes away or if that pain heals, you don't know who you are anymore. And so you will hold on to it as a way to, because you've so constructed your identity around it. So... I don't know how many of you can relate to that, but I myself definitely can. And as of lately, I'm realizing throughout this work and this journey that I have idolized my pain. I've idolized my trauma and I've idolized this quote unquote work. And at times, I believe, if I'm being honest, I've used it as a crutch or I've used it as an excuse. And it's it's tough because, you know, it's something that we really want to work on. We want to change. We want to evolve from. At the same time, it's it's very consuming. And I guess my, my struggle right now is trying to find the balance between not letting it be my identity, but also not giving it its respected time or energy or effort towards healing from it. Also, one more thing I got from Instagram, which is, is very applicable right now, is those moments when you realize you've exited survival mode and entered thrival mode. And when you realize it was you who got there, well done. And to just echo those sentiments and something I try to remind myself of is who I was in survival mode back then is no longer who I need today. Now it's time for the flight. Now it's time for the thrival mode back to that recent quote I just read. It's a tough transition. It's not a light switch. It doesn't just appear when you want it to. It just doesn't hit you over the head whenever it's convenient. It is something we have to actively remind ourselves and be conscious of that who we needed to be back when may not be who we need to be today. So all that hard work, let's let it pay off. Let's reap the fruits of all of our labor and let's just enjoy the present moment. This week's episode with my dear friend Tyree Rudolph is going to be really special, very transparent, very vulnerable. We're going to be talking about all the ins and outs of the current work process and what is not going to be over glamorized. We're just going to shoot you straight, um, realizing it's all worth it in the end, but it's a lot of days where it may not seem like that. <laughs> so we're going to lay it all out. 
Also, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating and a review. Let me know your thoughts in this episode. Please share this with anyone that you think could resonate or benefit from it. That would be a huge help to them and, and to myself to get the, the message even more out there, to spread it to the masses. And lastly, uh, just a reminder, I don't really promote this often, but I've been told I should. And so here we go. Um, I offer consultations. It is via Zoom, one-on-one, -on -one, you and I. I have a couple of different packages there and uh, I'll put the link. It's always in the show notes. And it's also in the link in my Instagram bio. And uh, yeah, just try to help people more of a one-on-one -on -one situation. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the show notes and or go to Instagram, click the link in the bio. It says one-on-one -on -one consultations with JD. All right, no more talking. Please enjoy this beautiful organic conversation between Tyree and I. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. To thank, the show. you. thank you for having me. Of course. I'm so glad we get to do this. Uh, little backstory. For the people. We go way back. Yes. We go way back <laughs> to the Midwest. We go way back to the yes. Midwest. Uh, what are we what are we talking? Like ten years? Yeah. Yeah. It was about ten like exactly yeah. ten years ago. Yeah. Happy yeah. anniversary. Yes, happy <laughs> anniversary. Um, and um, now here we are in LA. And um, yes. this is the third time I've seen you I think in those in those 10 years yes stretch. one time was like a random run in at uh the guest event yes I think and then um last week we we caught up and then now here we are I know and we're both parents yes so. and yet we were young parents yes we were both young parents we, we talked yes. about that before I remember we were like babies having babies yeah I remember when when you told me you had a, a child I was like oh, that never happens I'm not alone yes <laughs> <You know what? laughs> never happens it's always like yeah being stared at and judged and <laughs> it wasn't fun um speaking of judge though today i think is is uh the appropriate theme is going to be don't judge a book by its cover by its cover yes yeah and speaking of modeling i think a lot of people um i'm sure you can relate to this that hear my story like the the flaws and the the bad days and and the you know so on and so forth the work of it all they're like shocked yeah like what you you go through stuff i'm like yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. yes. Yes. What did you What did you think? You know, it's not always glitz Absolutely. and glamour. You know, in this perfect thing. Have you ever had that? You know, happen to you? Uh, yeah, it happens all the time. First of all, people assume I'm a lot younger than what I am. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing. It's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. And when I, I forget that sometimes, and I'll naturally start talking about my life, mm -hmm. and then they're a little taken back, and yeah. I'm like, I have to pick my kids up from school, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm grocery shopping or I have to do this or like the PTA or like just things that moms do. Yeah. And they're kind of looking at me kind of like, wait a second. You're like a, you're an adult. Like a whole adult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> and I'm for like, sure. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so that's always interesting to see people's reaction to that. Mm, um, for sure. Because then they also kind of like let a guard down mm. once they realize that like, okay, yeah. you're relatable. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, my, my day, <laughs> there's ketchup in my backseat probably now. For sure. <laughs> I'm like, yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you wear a lot of hats. Um, and so you're a mother. You are yeah. a retired model. Uh, I'm going to say retired ish. Okay. Yes. Okay. Retired ish. Yeah. Transitioning. Let's gotcha. say that. That's, that's, that's a good word Transitioning. for it. Transitioning. Um, any other hats that I'm, that I'm missing? Uh, well, Soon, coming up this summer, I will be going to school. Okay. So I will be a student. Congrats. Again. What are you going Thank for? Thank you. Culinary arts. Okay. Uh, specializing in food as medicine. Mm. So I'm excited about that. Sounds like a, like a cookbook title. Yeah. Food as oh. medicine. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You're welcome. That's not the name <laughs> of the course, but it <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 I just I just feel like you know where I'm at right now in my life it's. You know, I'm in my 30s. Mm -hmm. I'm exploring myself all over again. Yeah. And so it's... What's it's that been like for you? Uh, at first, I was really hesitant to do that because mm -hmm. I've identified with this lifestyle and with this career for so long. Sure. 
Um, but being in my 30s now, and I've heard women say before, you just you you are so much more sure of who you are mm -hmm. and what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And as I get more comfortable in that and allowing that to, you know, make room for that in my life. Yeah. That's why I'm not at Coachella this weekend. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm, I find myself being happy or, or not necessarily like happier, but like free, like a weight is like lifted off. Mm -hmm. Like a pressure? Like a pressure. Okay. Yeah. To kind of keep this persona going. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about like, you know, w what people think about models. Like, yeah, let's do it. The taboo around that is just, uh, they think that life's a bit easier for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be ignorant to say, like, when it comes to some things, like, modeling did give me a, an amazing platform. Sure. Absolutely. Um, however, the mental health journey I've been on has not been easy. Mm -hmm. um, juggling being a mom and simple things that people don't think about that comes with this is we don't get health insurance. No. We have to pay our own taxes. We have to pay our own taxes. <laughs> we don't know when we're going to get We don't know when check. we're going to get paid. Yeah, right. That's um, right. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, we get, like, a lot of things for free. Some things we do get for free, but at the same time, it's like... Um, it's a lifestyle that you have to keep up mm -hmm. and maintain. And it's not for everybody. It's not for everyone. Not for most, <laughs> really. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that because I, you know, <clears throat> everyone who's like, I want to model and tell me about it and what do I do and where do I go? And, and, and I have like a couple follow-up questions even before I give you information, you know, to agencies and open calls. And, and I'm like, are you sure you're ready for this? Because it's, it's you know, not what you see on Instagram. Back when right. I used to say it's not what you see in reality shows, you know. Right. It's uh, it's not for everybody, you know, yeah. like I, it, the busier you are, the more you're probably going to travel. Yeah. And a lot of people have a hard time up and going all the time, you know, Absolutely. different hotel beds, different time zones, you're around different people, different flights, different food, right? So on and so forth. And a lot of people don't really take that into consideration. They're so more concerned about their looks. And I'm like, that's like probably 40% yeah. of it all. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much Literally. more that you have to, you know, really get together in order to be a professional full-time model yes full-time uh, full-time right yes. because i i have that's rare it's so rare and, yeah. and i guess for men yeah it's very especially. rare when i'm on jobs people are like what else do you do and i'm yeah. like what do you mean <laughs> they're bartenders yeah or right. trainers something yeah you know and i'm like oh oh i, I do this is it i do it yeah. full-time and now it's like i have a podcast but i'm not you know yeah making money like that <laughs> off yeah. of it you know yet but yeah that's yet. all i do and they're like yeah exactly and they're like whoa teach me you yeah. know and so that's where that 60 percent comes in so i'm glad you said that because it's um it's not always glamorous and i think for me what i've realized the last uh five or six years um i myself am trying to transition out to basically to get to the point where i i would want to do to do the job not necessarily need to do the job yes. financially and mainly because it has taken a toll on my mental health yes um living up to a certain persona you know to your point um, trying to put on this big smile and be on, right, yes. on set, it takes a lot out of you. Yeah. And whenever we have a bad day, we're supposed to show up professionally and just put that shit to the side and to be like, side. here I am, you paid me X amount of dollars, I'm going to yes. give you all I got. And um, it's taken a toll on me. And it's taken a toll on my, um, my relationships in my life as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I can definitely relate to what you're talking about. And if mm -hmm. you you know care to share any anything along those lines, because it's, I know you feel me. <laughs> We've <laughs> oh, talked yeah. about this before, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's one of these things where it's like, you can have a great personality. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point when I was younger, maybe 24, 25, where I'm like, what can I do to work more? What yeah. can I do to be better? Sure. And you can show up with a, the best personality but if you're just not what the market is into right now that's right. just what it is or yeah. um you know and then you start to think like what can i change about myself especially for us women sure it's like what like what do i need to do yeah and that's when you get like the pressure and then i remember um being on set one time and uh the photographer assistant mentioned he's like models are always fishing for compliments 
and mm. I didn't know what that like what he meant by that. But it's all of our insecurities coming out, and it's like, oh my god, I love your hair that color. I was thinking about that my hair that color, but I don't think I look good with my hair that color. <laughs> oh my god, no, you look great, baby. You look so good. Like, right. oh my god, I wish I was still as tan. And there's and it's just like, but we're so insecure around each other, and we're looking yeah. at the next model like. Maybe I should get bangs. <laughs> right. Or are they going to take my job? Are they going to take my job? Or she yeah. works a lot. Like, what is she doing mm-hmm. to work so much? And then you're looking at yourself and your reflection like, okay, so what can I do? What can I change? Yeah. And that, sure. especially at a young age, takes a toll on you. Yeah. Because I'm constantly critiquing myself on things that I shouldn't change or sometimes can't change. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty tough. We started back when height was a big thing. mm and I'm on the shorter end, or I was. Okay. Being 5'7". Oh, wow. And that's back yeah. when we used to lie. And so I would say, in New York City, <laughs> I'm 5'9". <five nine." laughs> right, right. And yeah. that was an insecurity of mine. Sure. So just things like that, where I'm just like, how do I look taller? Like, And I'm looking mm. at the top. And it's just that all the time. And then you're traveling around, and you're doing jobs here and there. And I was so broke. Right. I was so broke. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm at the airport, like, I'm like, okay, Terry, you have, like, 50 bucks for this whole trip. They don't pay, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it was, it, it's, it's, it's a lot more to it than what people think. For sure, yeah. So I want to mention something, uh, just kind of getting back to the topic here. Um, I saw a Instagram post that you had, and you had mm-hmm. a beautiful caption. And uh, actually, it's, it's on the screen right now. So this was a, a new self-love challenge. And you said, no more self-deprecating language or behaviors. Deflecting compliments and or belittling oneself is not a sign of humility. You can be both humble and self-aware. Unlearning and learning this. While I was worried about making others feel comfortable or secure by downplaying myself, I didn't realize just how harmful my self-deprecating comments subconsciously impacted my confidence, plus misconstrued my image of self-worth. Hello, 2022. Beautifully well written and and so eloquently said. Um, it really resonated with me and I'm, and I'm sure a lot of people. One thing that really stood out, uh, the chunk here is, while I was worried about making others feel comfortable or secure by downplaying myself, I can relate. Yeah. See, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, self-sabotaging, yeah. not feeling like you deserve certain things yeah. or you're just like, you've told yourself like, I'm just an ordinary person. And Mm. it's just like, you kind of want to like balance the modeling with being humble. And so what you do is you downplay it, but it's just like, no matter what career you're in, you, you know, embrace, you know, whatever it is about you. That's amazing. Yeah. Instead of deflecting it because it doesn't come off as humble. It, it can come off now that I'm older. Mm -hmm. When I see that happening, I'm like, no, embrace it. Yeah. Like, if so, if I'm like, that's a beautiful ring, I would be like, oh. Like, mm-hmm. now I'm like, thanks. Yeah. It was less, like, you know, it's just yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accepting the compliment. Accept it. Yeah. Embrace it. Mm-hmm. Live with it. Live in the yeah. moment. Have it. Own it. Yeah. What has it been like? I mean, you just posted this, but what has it been like in the last month with, with this kind of newfound awareness? Um... Being a mother has a lot to do with it because okay. I look at my daughter and I see myself at that age and I was the same exact way. Yeah. And so when she's on set with me and she's shrinking, I'm like, Kylie, we're getting paid to be here. Like, th- it's okay to, like, you know, like, yeah. you know, chin up, like, mm-hmm. be proud of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Even though it's not like a skill or something like we can, you know, get sure. better at or whatever, uh, it, it's, it's, you're not, don't punish yourself for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I also, I, I want to say something too, for anyone listening or watching, it's just like these two beautiful people sitting in the couch complaining about stuff. It's like, it's not even about that. First of all, the reason why I wanted to have this particular part of the conversation is because to prove to everyone that everyone goes through things. Oh, I yeah. don't care if you are a model. I don't care if you have a nine to five. I don't care if you're a janitor. Everyone goes through things in life. Yeah. These are our particular things. Um, this is what our experiences are. Mm-hmm. As I, I always say, I'm not an expert in any any realm besides my own experiences, which I am an expert in because mm-hmm. they were mine, <laughs> you know? So And then toll it takes on your mental health. So even right. this with this situation, uh, yeah. with the caption that I put there, it was more so of like being like Tyree, the, like a lot of that self-doubt you get with moving into different areas of your life, it's 
because you can't accept, you know, any compliments. Right. I, even when people would say, because I'm a single mom, like, oh, my God, you're such a great mom. And I might say something like, I have to be. And it's just like, mm. no. You know what I mean? It's like, don't do not do that. And I would sure. do that so much. And then, like, the people closest to me would stop me and be like, no, trust me. Like, you're doing an amazing job. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. It, yeah, so it's still it's still happening. It's a work in progress, you know, in, a, sure. in, in progress. And so yeah. um, I would just say it does take a toll on your mental health because mm. it spills into other areas of my life. Yeah. So even with going to culinary school, um, cooking is something I enjoy and love. Do I think I'm good enough to make it a career? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. If I was to cook something now, I would be staring at you, like waiting for <laughs> your response. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's like the confidence isn't there, but it's like, sure. don't worry about that, Tyree. Like, just do what you love, yeah. be in it. And, you know, yeah. I say that now, but that's not how it goes. <laughs> I was going to say, e- easier said than done. Yeah. Um, what, what I'm learning is, uh, first of all, at least you're showing up. Yeah. At least you're like, I'm going to take these classes, I'm going to try. If I fail, fine, but at least I know I tried. So good for you for even just going down that road. And the other part is anytime we start something new. Oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed to be a model, by the way, and doing anything new. Oh, okay. Because, they're, you know, like, are, they already kind of look at you a certain oh, way. Oh, sure. They, they, uh, and then yeah. they're like, cute. Like, oh, cute. oh you, you cook. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> right. cute. And, and so yeah. that is also in the back of my head when I'm sure. like, doing things too sure i hear you i, I yeah. yeah i think it was it was it for me too with podcasting it's like oh it's just a hobby or a phase and i was like a, a part of me um this is where the ego could be could be a good thing um i'm like okay cool watch this yeah you know what i mean yeah. like i remember when i first started doing ig lives uh-huh. people were blown away that i like spoke well and yeah. I articulated myself well and I was we able to hold depth. the conversation. I have depth. They're just like, what the hell? And I was like, yeah. what did you think? You know, yeah. I'm like, never mind. Don't answer that. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so uh, to the cooking thing, you know, it is going to be something that's new for you, but anything yeah. that is new is foreign. It's, it's uncomfortable and we don't typically like to be uncomfortable. And the other thing is, um, I think it's, it's amazing what, not only what you're doing for yourself mm-hmm. and for anyone who, who follows you, but mainly for your kids. Mm -hmm. right your daughter will see like when she's your age like you know mommy could have just stayed modeling Mm -hmm. and you would have been you know for the most part good maybe get into some acting stuff some commercials whatever but you were like this is what i do yeah this is not who i am yes let me go down the route of who i am and who i want to become and um, it's okay to evolve yes it's okay to mix it up that's how you grow that's how you grow it's scary yes but you're about to be a living example. And even if you fail, even when you fail, mm-hmm. with all, you're going to fail. Oh, I'm yeah. going to, we're all going to fail. It's how you get back up. It's Absolutely. how you continue to show up that she's going to remember, yeah. which is super dope. Thank you. So for that. So I want to go back to uh, talking about the work. The work. The self-work in particular. Yes. And how sometimes it's not always a sunny day. Yeah. Sometimes it's a harder day than others. Yeah. Sometimes you need a day. Yes. So I was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the journey to even get there. I was very resistant. Mm. And I'm throwing all these elements. I'm like, it's COVID. It's this. It's, I, you know, yeah. <coughs> excuse me. And then once I was aware and I became aware of my behavior, I was like, wait a second. I don't want to be like this. Or not, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to ignore this. Right. I don't want to ignore it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to take that back. I don't want to ignore it. Yeah. And I got more comfortable with saying, okay, let's let's figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. And when I finally talked to a psychiatrist mm-hmm. and the conversation led in that direction, it was almost like a weight was lifted off of me because I'm like, okay, now I can put, you know, your finger on it. Yeah, yeah, an identity to it. Right. So, you know, and th- th- for lack of a better word, to say like, okay, I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, like there's like it's a chemical imbalance sure. that's going on. Yeah. And so when <laughs> when I finally told my uh, person I was dating, my family, my sisters, I have two sisters, mm-hmm. they were all like, 
We know. I can see that. And I was just like, oh, wow. Yeah. It's like, you know, like no one's going to say that. Or people will say it in an insensitive way, in a joking sure, way. Yeah. But they are pretty mature. So they were kind of like, we know. Mm. How'd that make you feel? Uh, it made me feel accepted. Okay. It was almost one of those things where it's like someone comes out the closet and we're like, we yeah. were waiting on you. Right. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was like, we knew. Um, and so it was one of those things where I, um, I felt like they gave me grace because of it. Okay. And I was the one that was punishing myself because of it. I was the one that wasn't giving myself grace. I was the one that was um, fighting it. Yeah. Denying it, which served me in no way at all. Mm. And so being aware of it, learning about it, learning how to either treat it or when I'm having these moments or episodes, how to maneuver in life so that I'm not hurting people around me. And that's what's important about it. It's like I, you know, you could self-sabotage all day, but I have children, I have people that I love. And then when you're dating, it's like, okay, sure. I'm having a moment. Yeah. That is 10 times better than, you know, deflecting or you're, you being confused and even more angry because you don't understand right. why you're having these feelings or these emotions um, and where it's stemming from. Yeah. And that in itself created anxiety mm. and depression. And so when you can get to the root of something, that's the doing the work part Mm -hmm. and not like medication or self-medicating or escaping or distraction or distractions. And so the doing the work sucks. (laughs) It does. I see why people (laughs) ignorance is so bliss. Uh, uh, But no, uh, honestly, like the doing the work and the reason why I say it sucks is because we still have to go on with everyday life. Yeah. And so those moments that I have where I'm sitting with myself and it's hard for me to face certain things or it's hard for me to come to terms with certain things. Um, it could kind of affect my entire day. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if, uh, a prime example, like when Kanye is going, you know, that, um, moment he was having with the divorce with Kim and everyone's making jokes and everyone's, um, you know, it was entertainment. Sure. Someone who, you know, I'm a bipolar Gemini too. It was hard to watch. I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't look at it. It was a trigger. It was a trigger for me yeah. because those behaviors are my behaviors. Mm. You know, you create this situation and play victim, things like that, you know, because you act out of emotion and you don't know how to, um, manage emotions sure you know a lot of contradicting actions and behaviors and your inner child is still i i had to realize that myself as well too and that that hurt that (laughs) that the person i'm dating said something to me and was like when you don't get your way it's almost like you're like a five-year-old and then something clicked in my head of like well that's probably when i stopped getting attention from my parents when I don't get my way, when I say act like a five-year-old, I'm like, well, I'm not going. Yeah. It's like that, you know what I mean? Where it's just sure. like, that's what my kids do. Mm. Yeah. And having that moment, because I'm doing the research, because I'm doing the therapy, when those moments happen, it's almost like, and people don't talk about this, mm-hmm. the guilt that I feel for projecting that onto people that I love. Yeah, that's why it sucks to do the work. Yeah, because you're you you're taking ownership for your actions now. Yeah, I'm not doing any more of that. You know, you know how I am, or like she's just like no, I'm not I'm not doing that anymore because I don't want to pass it down to my children. Right. That's why I'm doing the work. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <sighs> Thank this you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um. I relate. On, on so many levels, um, and, and especially when it comes to, you know, right now what, I, what I'm going through is uh, I guess I'm in the middle of it all, like the work part. Because, yeah, we, I mean, I've, I've been in therapy for so long, and it and it and I'm such an advocate for it. It helps out so much. 
I just right now have this, you know, like what now, w- what direction do I go in now? Cause I still have more healing to do. And, and I feel that. And, and, you know, when I'm around certain people that trigger me, it's, I'm still triggered, you know, yeah. not to say they're ever going to go away, but, but I'm sure that there's a, a better way to manage, handle it, et cetera. And, and I'm, I'm not there yet. Well, the work does not equal healing. It does, you know what I mean? It's it's the realization you're yeah. doing, you're digging right now. Right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. The healing will come from the all, all the digging. The healing will come, yeah, yeah, but like that doesn't, you know, yeah. and that's what they don't tell you about this either. <laughs> oh my God. They don't, and, and that's why it's important that I think we're talking about it now because from what I've seen, I, I don't really see a lot of like this talk, like this yeah. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> the, this work sucks. This work it's sucks. not a hashtag. Yeah. This is not a trend. This is not yeah. like a, you know... Um, mental health matters self-care Sundays like yeah. no this shit sucks yeah. and it's really hard and it's hard for us and it's also hard for the ones who are around us yes and and it's it's work it's just every bit of that word and um it's it's not to discourage people from it. it's just to manage your expectations mm-hmm. and to hopefully understand like it's a journey it's you gotta have patience for this this type of stuff this this long journey this process this progress and and uh it's I know it'll be worth it all. Uh-huh. Uh, it'll be worth the wait, worth the struggle, worth all the work. Um, it's just right now, it's just really, really hard. Yeah. Um, Can I be honest with you? Sure. I do have days where I'm like, does it end? And when you say mm. it will be worth it, um, <clears throat> like I always move out of love. Like I'm always a kind person that doesn't equal being healed. And so I think one of the things that I've done and I'm not sure if it's the right thing to do or not, but it helps me. And I'm and I tell myself, even if I don't fully completely heal, as long as I don't pass this down to the next generation that I'm raising, I'm okay with that. Right. It's a win. That's a win for me. Yeah. For me personally. Sure. Do I want to get to a space where I understand a lot of the things that I do and the whys behind it? Absolutely. And yeah. no longer be triggered by things? For sure. Yeah. But like you said, managing expectations, that's something that I had to tell myself to keep going on this journey. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. What stood out to me right now is you said you you lead with love. Yeah. That stands out for me because I lead with fear. Mm. And I think there's only... What does that look like? I'd rather the love. (laughs) (laughs) I'll tell you that. Trust me. My wife would rather the love. But uh, fear for me looks like... um, a lack of trust, feeling the need to have more control of a situation or, or a conflict or an but issue. But as a man, you're a protector too, so that could be yeah. something. Yeah, sometimes I, I need the love. I need okay. to be protected or feel protected. I need yes. reassurance, you know, um, and it's, it's hard to do both, I think, at times for, yeah. for me as a man. Um, but yeah, the, the, the fear is, um, okay, I'll also tell you, it kind of looks like... Uh, not lately, thankfully, um, but in the past, when I would get into like a big argument with either Shay or an ex, uh, my natural instinct would go to like, all right, well, we tried. It isn't going to work out. Let's wow. just go our separate ways. I'm on my own again. No worries. I've been on my own my whole life. Me against the world. Right. See ya. That's what fear looks like. Mm. And majority of that stems from i don't have a solution and i don't trust you a to come up with a solution and b i don't know how to ask Mm. for the help maybe uh, when did you realize this that's a that's that's deep yeah that's (laughs) for yeah yeah um that's beautiful thank you you, that you realized it like again even if you don't have the solution to it just yet that's that's okay thank you um I will say probably like within the last year, I've, I've been um, really unpacking all this, this mm-hmm. particular department of um, like, why do I just automatically reject, um, um, go into isolation uh-huh. and just push everybody away? And it's, it's the inner child. That's who he was. You know, everyone pushed uh-huh. him away. And so yeah. he had to fend for himself. It was mm-hmm. him against the world, mm-hmm. literally. Um, you know, everyone chose everyone but him. Okay, yeah. And so that didn't go away as I'm now 35. You yes. know, and say I found this out 34, 33. It didn't go away. 
it just was shoved under a rug. It was bottled up. And so right now it's, um, it's switching that fear to love mm-hmm. um, consistently and being aware of it. Yes, but being aware of it in the moment is different. Yes. <laughs> you know, here we are on hindsight on the couch, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but like in the moment uh, where my natural instinct is to isolate and, and push yeah. everyone away and it's me against the world, I have to like literally, it, it looks like going in, turning on a switch in my mind and in my heart to say, this is no longer needed here. Mm. This may have been needed when you were seven. Survival mode. 12, right? The yes. fight. Yes. There's a flight moment now. Yeah. You know, take your seat, buckle up. We're about to take off kind yeah. of thing, you know, and it's okay. And even if I'm not the pilot of this plane and my wife is, it's okay. Yeah. That, Tyree, was like, when I say hard, it was almost impossible for me to, to like surrender to that. Yeah. Because I've never done it before, ever, in any situation. Where are you at with it now? Um, I wish Shay was here <laughs> <laughs> to answer that. But uh, I, I will. I'll, I mean, I think it's. I can speak on behalf of her. It's it's a lot better. I will tell okay. you that. Um, because even if I mess up, um, in the moment, my um response time is way quicker. Like okay. I may need a second, but I don't need a week. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I don't need days. I might need like an hour. Yeah. So um, it's gotten a lot better, but it is a constant because it's not routine yet. Yeah. It's still like fear, 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 As fear. It's second nature. Yeah. To unlearn yeah. and learn something. Exactly. Yeah. And it's funny because going through it with Shay, she's love. She leads yeah. with love. Thankfully. Yeah. Right. Because if we That's both beautiful. live with fear, God help us. Yes. You know, <laughs> even with That's marital beautiful. therapy. Yeah. yeah. But, but luckily, this is the, the yin to my yang and the balance. Right. And she does such a good job of not taking it personal. Uh-huh. Understanding my inner child, which is such a help, because a lot of times she's like, this isn't even you. It's like yeah. your younger you. Oh, wow. That's beautiful that she can recognize that, too. <sighs> so beautiful. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm extremely blessed. And yes, lucky. you are. Yeah. So um, anyways, I, I, I went all around here, but um. It made me think when you said you lead with love, um, for the ones who lead with fear, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, okay, so I want to end with... Um, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book it's by its cover. It's mess over here. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, okay, so I want to go with uh, three questions for you. Okay. What was the last adversity moment you had to overcome? Could be big, could be small. Anything in between? You should have texted me these. No, no, no. <laughs> these these the, are the, the, the rawness. Last, oh, okay. Um, um, I would say I just came back from Vegas, okay? Mm-hmm. And the way that trip went and me being like, you know, like I'm a strong woman. I'm like in my 30s now. I'm so sure of who I am and what I want. <laughs> when, um, I don't know why I had such high expectations for men in Vegas. Uh-uh. But it was what was happening was I was showing up, leading with love, being friendly, being nice. Yeah. And I was getting this energy back from men that if they didn't get what they want from me or just, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. It was a, a, I was having moments where I was like, wait, you're not my friend. You just want something from me. And I took it so hard. Sure. I came back to L.A. and I was like, I hate people, mm. you know, because when you do leave with love, that's a passion you know, thing yeah. coming back in. And I was like, I thought this person was my friend and I didn't want to go to this club. And then I got blocked. And I just, you know, I yeah. just, I took it so personal. I took it so hard. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking to the guy that I'm dating and I'm like, you know, I can't believe that like they look at me like that. And he's just like, <laughs> why are you surprised? <laughs> like, 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 yeah, yeah, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And I, and, and he was just like, Tari, like calm down. And I was yeah. just like, no, I just didn't. And I was just like, after, you know, getting out of that space mm-hmm. and thinking about everything. Um, and I'm like, Tyree, you can't take on their um, actions. Baggage. Or baggage. baggage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're deflecting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And projecting. And, and projecting. And because it wasn't in a way that I I was giving love and that's not what I was getting back, mm-hmm. it, it, I, I took it all on. I yeah. was angry. I was, like, pushing people away now. Like, I don't, you know, like, and I was like, Tyree, that's not how you, you know, lead. And so dealing with that and still dealing with it because it's still kind of fresh, mm-hmm. I'm, like, now I'm still trying to learn how to, like, maneuver with people so yeah. that I'm not either, A, giving off the wrong um, 
you know, signs impressions, yeah. or impressions, and and then B, these expect managing expectations. Yeah, everyone doesn't show up like this. No. You know, <laughs> and I, you know, when you leave with love, or you know, you're the giver, and you expect to get that in return, and it and you don't, and then I'm just like, then it's switched. Then yeah. the the bipolarness kicks in, and then it's just. Mm. You know, you I become a different person, and it could be you know, like I used to say, like passion or defense mechanism. But it's just like Tyree, that's that's not an excuse. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a very conscious woman. Yeah. Take a minute, sit down. It's okay to feel what you're feeling because you have feelings. I feel everything very deeply. Mm-hmm. My feelings were hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, allowing myself to be in that space. And being okay with it, mm-hmm. ranting about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I spoke my mind to a couple of them. And, you know, just, yeah. and I was like, that's okay, but come back to, you know, you're doing the work. Right. Recognize it for what it is, let it pass through you, <coughs> keep it, keep it moving. Yeah. Can't stay there. Uh, so that's yeah. just one of the most recent ones. Yeah. And, and just to add a little something to that, I, I realized, um, I wonder if you could relate to this, where, because we're in the thick of it with the work, we're so we're hypersensitive, hypersensitive, and our triggers are like even more so on 10. And so the littlest thing is now the biggest thing, whereas before it wouldn't really matter or we would have brushed it off or ignored it. Uh, question number two, when was the last time you were vulnerable and what was the outcome? I would say the last time I was most vulnerable is when we were supposed to originally shoot this podcast. <laughs> and I said, <coughs> Justin, I'm having a day. Mm-hmm. This is one of those days. I can't pick myself up. Um, <laughs> the load is heavy today. I am so sorry. I will reimburse you for the space in the rental, but I cannot show up. Um, yeah. And so... To be honest, I felt like I owed you that because of what it is we're doing here Mm -hmm. and knowing what it is I'm dealing with. I have to be okay with it. Every day for me is not the same. Yeah. And so uh, it's still very hard to tell people, you know, at times like, uh, you know, I'm sorry, just that, like, I, I'm not, <laughs> and this is LA, I'm not a flaker, I don't mean to, like, mm-hmm. and so the people that I know that, like, truly love me and care, I have been more transparent about being bipolar with them, mm-hmm. and um, just so that they understand that if I could have changed that day, I w- if I had, you know, I, I would have, yeah. but some things are out of my control, so... Yeah, and yeah. you know that that day, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, you were like, "Can you talk?" And I was like, "I I would rather talk. I I hate texting. Um, I'd rather talk. I'm a voice note person or on the phone or in person." And um, I'm glad we talked. I'm glad I ended up you know coming over because I just wanted to, I wanted you to know like I, I, I love my baby and my podcast, but like at this particular time like i could care less it's more about you yeah like how can i show up for you you know so um yeah and and i'm you know i'm glad the outcome was what it was right yeah. and, and, I, and i hope it was a and now that you know that like what i'm realizing with being more open about being bipolar i will call my mom or i'll call someone and i'm like oh my god you sound so good today and i'm like thanks you know yeah. it makes me feel good i'm like yeah. thank you like i am having a good day like this is a like thank you mm-hmm. and on the days that is not people they give me that grace right and so i am really you know thankful with uh just learning how to deal with it and uh, having everyone around me to just uh, be, you yeah. know be supportive so that mean, that means a lot of course the yeah. support system is, is it's everything to everything yeah exactly. okay yeah. ready w- one, one last question last question what does tyree admire most about Tyree? Let's see. I will say my style is phenomenal. (laughs) I am not humble about it at all. I you've seen my jackets and Oh yeah. Yes. I'll second that. Um (laughs) no. I um what I admire most about me is uh my consciousness, I think. Even I have a therapist, even when I'm talking to her 
she she'll tell me she's like Terry, I feel like I'm talking to the therapist. Like you use mm. the same dialogue we use. You know, and she's like, you know this. I said, I like knowing is half the battle. It doesn't mean that you you know. But I do pride myself, and I love that about myself that I'm, you know, I try my best to be self aware, even if it's things I don't like about me, you know, even if it's if it's things where I'm just kind of like, you know. I cheat in Uno and I can't help it. I cannot <laughs> help it. It's a bad habit. I cheat every single game. Yeah. I've gone home with cards in my pocket. <laughs> I like there's things yeah. about that where I'm just like, like this is just a little bit. Of, I don't steal. I'm not a clip. And I was like, sure. you cannot not cheat. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's just like things where I'm just like, shit. Like I really like I'm a sore loser. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so losing. just yeah. It, yeah, it just imb- like not embracing, but just like recognizing things. And so um, that way. You know, when I'm showing up, I can also be gentle with myself as much as I can, you know, say I love these things about me. I also know, like, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, I procrastinate and it's terrible, but I know it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You accept it. It's a Yeah. And and once I accept it, I think it's like the older I get, the more I accept these things about myself. Yeah. Yeah. The self-conscious thing is um, it's a gift to have. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people out here who are in denial. Yeah. A lot of people out here who are... um, Oblivious. (laughs) Oblivious. <laughs> it just goes over their head. What do you mean? They you don't want to see it. <laughs> they don't want to see, yeah. see it. And uh, so it is uh, fortunate, but unfortunate it, that people are now becoming more self aware. It's fortunate because of the obvious reason, and it's unfortunate that it's taken this long, but better late yes. than never, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. I get it. Wow, this was, this was therapy in itself. Oh, great. This was therapy. Good. That makes me really happy. Yes. Yeah. I tell you, you nothing to worry about. Like, you should charge because this is my second therapy <laughs> session with you now. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's you know, it's all love, and yeah. I, I'm just um, it's amazing. I'm so happy we got to reconnect. Thank you for creating the space to you know have me on the show, connect, yeah. uh, and I I love where you are in life right now. Thank you. Yeah, and Shay's very lucky. Appreciate I it. I think I don't know. I haven't seen Shay in a second, but, but yeah, like we're the girls that I. Yeah, the years like we are I cannot wait to meet her, but like yes, yeah. thank you. Yes. We're we're both very lucky, yes. and um, also the the. Timing. I'm sure you're very lucky too, from the way you oh, described her. I'm living the dream. Yeah, honestly, it's like I. Yeah, yeah, I'm just very, very, very blessed, very fortunate, um, and we're very fortunate that our timing was right. Speaking of timing, I really think this was the right time for us. Absolutely. I feel that way. You know, yeah. last week, even Shay was telling me when I was leaving there to head over to you, she's like, um, Hey, this is going to be like the best pre call ever. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like you're going to be in person with her and exchange yeah. that energy and be there for her. And, um, incredible, you know, and, and yeah, so everything happened for the right reason. Absolutely. And you're here and I'm, I'm just so proud. And like, I see you, I see you. Oh my God. I, I do <laughs> to you. you like I'm I'm just like that I, I can relate to so much what you're talking about yeah. and it's like no one wants to talk about it until no. you hear someone else first and that was part of like I remember you kept saying like I can't believe you're here I can't believe you're yeah. here last week and I'm like of course you know like yeah. uh, of course I'm here like yeah. so and I'm always going to be here by the way Thank um you. so add me to your support system <laughs> and, and Shay and so I'm just proud of you um Appreciate we're that. just we're gonna we're gonna keep at it yeah we're gonna keep at it it's beautiful it is it's the journey is beautiful it uh, is yeah. so yeah so thank you again for coming on i Absolutely. appreciate the time and thank uh you. i'm thank sure people will me. have to do a round two yes. eventually. yes 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 yeah thank cool. you guys